Okay, go! Okay! Yeah. I used to play with a Stretch Armstrong as a kid, and ever since then, I've always wanted to try that effect of stretching the body out, much like Mr. Fantastic. Though my thought always went right to Stretch Armstrong, this could go for either one of those. This is very much a superhuman stretchy effect, which is something our VFX artist Joey did inside of Blender. But before we get into that, I do want to tell you about a sound effects competition Artlist has going on right now. This is the Artlist Sound Effects Challenge. It's Instagram oriented and gives you a chance to win your share of $10,000 in gear. To participate, you will need to make a 45 second to one minute video with music and sound effects from Artlist. Then upload your video to Instagram as a carousel. First in there, you're gonna need the timeline breakdown of your video with music and sound effects, a timeline breakdown with the sound effects only, and of course, the full scene with everything in and no timeline. You're gonna to wanna to use the hashtag ALSFX challenge and tag artlist.io. The contest launched on April 21st and ends May 5th. Winners are gonna be announced on May 12th, and there's some great prizes involved from partners like Jayun, Nanlite, Atom Audio, Rode Microphones, and LoomCube. And whether you win or not, this sort of contest is always a blast and a great reason to practice your sound work. So check out the link in the notes below for more info and to jump right into the challenge. But now, with that out of the way, let's get into our effect. So once we had our footage, we started off by jumping right into Blender. We're gonna go into Motion Tracking Workspace, import our footage, and click Set Scene Frames to match the in and out points of the footage to the project. We're gonna track a few points of contrast that stay in frame for the whole shot, and we're gonna check the tripod option in the solve panel since there is very little to no parallax in the shot. Then we're gonna click solve camera motion, and you can also adjust the focal length of the lens, which may be necessary in some cases. Then we're gonna click set as background and set up tracking scene. Back in the default view, we're gonna align the camera to match the ground plane. Also be sure to scale the camera size if needed. It's important to work at the proper scale in any 3D software. For the 3D model of the arms, we're gonna use Make Human, which is a free character generator software. We're gonna approximate the size of Josh's arms, give them a texture, then import the model into Blender. We'll go into the edit mode and delete everything except for the arms. And at this point, we'll set up our lighting, add two spheres into the scene as reference, one with a default gray material and one with a glossy material. We'll also add in a reference model that's around Josh's height. Change the default lamp object from a point lamp to a sun lamp, then adjust the intensity and rotation to match the scene. You can also adjust the softness of the shadows by changing the angle property. Smaller angles equate to sharper shadows. Now we need to create some new point tracks for Josh's arm as well as the car. We'll go back to the motion tracking workspace. Under the objects tab, we'll add a new object and rename it Josh's arm front. These objects are essentially containers for tracking points. With this new object selected, we'll create a new track where Josh's arm meets his sleeve, and we'll also manually correct the track if it slips at all. Once that's done, we're going to go to the geometry tab in the solve panel and click link empty to track. This will create an empty object that sticks to the tracking point. However, this point has no no sense of depth, so we're going to create a large plane facing toward the camera and set it as the depth object for the empty. We'll repeat this process for the other arm as well as the car. Now we're going to create a rough model of the car for casting shadows. Create a new cube and line it up so the origin point is at the base of the car. In edit mode, we'll adjust the sides of the cube and do some basic modeling. Again, this will only be used as a shadow catcher, so it doesn't have to be detailed. Back in object mode, parent the car object to the car track. But there's a problem. The car goes off screen, but the track stays put. So for this, we're going to have to manually animate the tracking point out of the frame. 
To do this, go to the last frame of the track and apply visual transforms. Keyframe the influence of the flow track constraint off, then manually keyframe the position of the car track from there. Now we're going to work on tracking the arm. So we'll create a new empty and parent it to the arm track. We'll do all of our animating and corrections on this new empty instead of directly animating the arm object. Adjust the arm model and shader setting to match the footage. We'll also add a cylinder object to represent the sleeve line. And now it's time to manually animate the position of the empty so the arms and sleeves line up. Do this for the back arms as well. But at this point, we can start setting up the soft body simulation. The basic idea is that a single strand of vertices control the movement of the arm mesh. Create a new single vert object and extrude it so that it lines up with the arm. Be sure to give the strands lots of subdivisions. This will help make the simulation more jiggly once the arm is stretched out. Next, we'll select the vertices on the upper arm and the hands and add them to a new vertex group. We'll enable soft body physics for the strand and set the vertex group as pin. Now, we'll use a hook modifier to attach the hand vertices to the car object. Make sure that the hook modifiers are placed above the soft body modifier. At this point, the strand should be simulating properly. We just need to link it to the arm mesh. Add a skin modifier to the strand object. This will give it thickness and in edit mode, we can select all the vertices and resize the skin radius. We just need this to be big enough to encapsulate the entire arm mesh object. Next, add a mesh deform modifier to the arm mesh. Select the soft body strand as the deformation object and click bind. The arm mesh should now be following the simulation. In some cases, the arm mesh will stop following the motion of the soft body strand. This is due to the skin modifier adding extra polygons as the vertices stretches out, changing the polygon count and preventing the mesh deform modifier from working properly. This can be solved by adding more subdivision vertices to the strand. Be sure to rebind the arm mesh to the strand each time you make a change like this. To make the thing look a little more crazy, we can add in a cylinder, enable collision physics and randomly animate it to crash into the arms. This will help add some extra motion to the simulation. We can also go ahead and bake the soft body simulation once they look good. Right now, the simulation immediately starts deforming the arm mesh and we want the arms to look normal at first and then droop down. To do that, we'll select the arm mesh and create two vertex groups, one with no vertices selected and one with all the vertices selected. We'll add a vertex weight mix modifier to the arm object and put it above the mesh deform modifier. Set vertex group A to none and group B to all and make the mix set V group B. Then set the mesh deform vertex group to none. Now if we animate the influence amount on the weight mix modifier, we can change how much the soft body simulation deforms the mesh object over time. We'll make sure that the car object is invisible to the camera and is only casting shadows and we'll edit the car geometry to match the shadows correctly. Now it's time to render and we're going to render three passes in total. One one for the front arm, one for the back arm, and a combined shadow pass. We're going to be sure to check the compositing tab by default. The camera tracker creates a node setup for compositing renders within Blender, but we won't be using any of that. Also, we can use those cylinder sleeve objects from earlier as holdout objects, which will cleanly mat out the ends of the arms. And now we jump into After Effects. But before we import the 3D renders, we're going to start painting out Josh's arms. To start off, we'll do another camera camera track in After Effects. We're going to pre-comp that footage and then in that pre-comp, we're going to create an adjustment layer and add an unsharp mask effect. Turn up the radius and amount values. This will help the tracker see more details in the footage. And then we're also going to create a solid. Set the blend mode to silhouette alpha and create rough masks over any moving parts of the shot, like Josh and the car. Now we can track the footage in the main comp. And once that's done, we can turn off the visibility for those filters and masks. We'll take a freeze frame of the background and patch it over the arms to get a clean plate. And now we need to do some rotoscoping and keying to bring Josh back, but leave his arms out. And we'll also need to create a patch of his shirt for where his arms occluded. Now we can bring our 3D renders into this comp and we're going to put a tint effect on the shadow pass and set it to multiply, make a copy of the footage and add an extra effect. Then we're going to tweak settings until we've isolated the shadows. Now we can use this layer as a mat to help blend the real shadows with the CG shadows. The arm still doesn't line up perfectly, so we're going to use some CC smear effect to fix that, along with other warping effects like liquify and bulge. To speed this part up a bit, we can track the corners of the arm renders and apply that motion to be the from point of the smear effect. 
We can also make an expression that makes the to point follow the from points position, but still we'll animate it here so our adjustments will stay properly tracked. After a bunch of tweaks and fixes, we finally have our finished shot. And that's it. Now you can make your friends as stretchy as you want. Links to everything we've talked about in the notes below, including Blender, which is a great piece of free software. And also don't forget to check out Artlist's sound effects challenge, which is going on right now. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. <laughs>